My grandparents had a farm out in middle of nowhere, Mississippi. Just grandpa, grandma, and nothing but country roads for 30 miles. Every summer, my parents would dump me there just to get rid of me, and considering what I was like as a kid, I don't really blame them. Hated it there, of course. This is the 80s, mind you, so there's even less options to keep me occupied. A TV with four channels, church on Sunday, busy work, and not a soul around except Aunt May, my grandma's sister, who lived about five miles down the road. As I understood it, she and my grandma didn't get along. Well, I get dropped off at the farm one year and find out that in the meantime, Aunt May died. Her house was apparently so rotten and termite infested that they didn't have any chance but to tear it down and in the meantime, the farm had a new guest. A little responsibility she'd left behind. Aunt May had a cat. Name was Raffi. Skinny, snow white fur, dark, dark green, I'm talking nearly black eyes. I don't know what the breed was. A few things about Raffi. He had a deep voice. I really can't tell you in words how deep this cat's voice was, like a grown ass man making cat noises. There's a video online of another cat with a really deep voice, and it was pretty much exactly like that. If I'm remembering right, Raffi once had a surgery that paralyzed his vocal cords, just kind of leaving him with this permanent deep voice. And I swear he knew his voice sounded weird. He'd wait until you were alone or getting a drink of water in the middle of the night and go meow and scare the ever living bejesus out of you. He had to be 20 years old. But he didn't look old. Besides him being perpetually skinny no matter how much he ate, he looked and acted like a completely healthy, active cat. And Raffi was evil. There's a lot of people that really recoil when you slap the label evil on an animal. Some hippie types especially, going, oh no, animals aren't evil, it's just that people, oh my god, shut up, you know it when you see it, Raffi was 100% malevolent. Now, this doesn't mean Raffi just attacked us at random or anything, we were still the people that fed him after all. But it was all the little things, just off the top of my head. The aforementioned scaring you in the middle of the night with his voice thing. He didn't just limit himself to that either. He'd climb on your bed and do it. I woke up a few times to that before I learned to lock my door. Bitey. Stared at you like the way a person plotting your murder does. Creepy as hell. Liked to watch fire. It was about the only time he'd let anyone pet him. Stoke a fire, he'd watch the embers until they were completely cooled off. Would go out of his way to torture his prey. I don't mean play with his food like a normal cat does, but make birds and rats and stuff. Scream. And it wasn't enough that he did that. He'd go out of his way to find a person to do this in front of. He wanted an audience. Once saw him throw a live rat into the fire. He wasn't allowed in the house after that. So, evil cat. I hated Raffi. My grandma really hated Raffi. But for some damn reason, Raffi always acted almost normal around grandpa. Never really understood why. Well, one night I wake up to a gunshot downstairs. The next thing I heard was my grandfather cursing like a sailor down in the kitchen. My grandfather was the most uptight Christian you can imagine, so this was the first time I'd ever heard him curse in all my life. Another gunshot. My grandfather still shouting bloody murder. Like screams of fear and rage. My mind kind of takes a backseat to adrenaline. And the next thing I know, I'm flying down the stairs with a candlestick in one hand, ready to club the hell out of whatever my grandfather's yelling about. Grandma's right behind me in her nightgown. It's really quiet as we come down the stairs. All we hear is grandpa breathing, breathing hard. 
and it's coming from the kitchen. We creep towards it. Grandma calls out Grandpa's name, John, and he kind of croaks out an answer. Rafi. Both of us walk inside the doorway, and we see what's happened. Grandpa's killed Rafi, double barreled shotgun under his arm, still smoking. There's a big cluster of buckshot craters in the kitchen wall, and another on the floor where Rafi's laying completely dead. The cat's barely even a corpse, half his head blown right off, and another big hole in the side of his chest, intestines leaking out, blood oozing on the tiles. The one eye he had left, just wide open in fear, his mouth kind of frozen in a snarl. Grandpa's covered in scratches, I mean all over, just coating his face and shoulders. Grandma screams, of course, and Grandpa just kind of walks over to one of the table chairs and lights a cig. Grandma's yelling at him, yelling at why the hell he just blew away May's cat, and Grandpa does something kind of weird. Usually when Grandma yelled at him, he'd give as good as he got, but this time, he just kind of took it. Just kind of sat in the chair, letting Grandma rant until he sat up, walked over, and muttered something into her ear. I don't know what it was, but he said it in a very quiet and very serious voice. Grandma just kind of stops, nods, and looks to me, tells me to go back to bed, tells me that they're going to go bury Rafi. I offer to help, and they just flat out shoot me down. I go upstairs, heart still pounding, and the last thing I remember was going to sleep in Grandpa's old pickup truck starting up and driving off. I wake up the next day, and Grandpa's sitting in the kitchen, face covered in band-aids, reading the newspaper. I ask him what the hell happened last night, and he glares at me and tells me not to cuss. Then, he just drops it, refuses to talk about it the rest of the summer. Over the next month, his scars heal, except one long thin line across his cheek, a little memento from that night. Well, rest of the summer comes and goes. I go back to my parents. After that summer, I stopped going to grandpa's, not because of Rafi, but I just started going to a closer summer camp. In retrospect, I think I hated grandpa's place less. Fast forward 10 years. Grandma passes away in the meantime, breast cancer. Grandpa is still alive, and I'm at his farm just helping him clear some stuff out of the barn. We're taking a break on his front porch, just kind of watching a storm roll in over the horizon. I don't know what drove me to ask, but I do. Hey, Grandpa. Yeah? Remember Raffy? He kind of looks at me. Yeah? What happened that night? Why did you shoot him? He's just real quiet for a good moment, then looks at me dead in the eye. You remember where the Bible is. Your nightstand. Why? Go get it. Weird thing to ask, but whatever. I got up the stairs, got it, came back out, and gave it to him. He puts it on his lap puts a hand on it, raises his other hand. Grandpa, the most religious proper Christian I've ever known, swears to God on the Holy Bible that everything he's about to tell me is true. I look at him kind of funny, but if anything, I'm more than interested now. He takes a deep breath. Okay, here goes. Apparently, Raffi could talk. Not to us, Grandpa said. To Margaret, my grandmother. The way he put it, after he shot Raffi, Grandma told him that Raffi had been talking to her for a good few months, always in that deep, deep cat voice of his. Stuff she brushed off as her imagination at first, then shit she couldn't ignore, started small. She'd be walking down the hall and hear a baritone, 
Hello, Margaret. And then see Raffi walking past her. Then stuff like, Let me in, Margaret. When the doors were locked and he wanted inside the house. And then it got worse, meaner, more hostile. Grandma didn't tell Grandpa because she was afraid she was going crazy. That Grandpa would take her to a doctor. Grandma hated doctors. A good reason they didn't catch the cancer until it was too late. And she'd get put in an insane asylum or something. Real weird stuff. And she swore she saw his lips move when he talked. You shouldn't have done that, Margaret. You'll end up just like your sister, Margaret. It's almost time, Margaret. And this just keeps going. Apparently, this is what fueled a lot of the fights with my grandpa that summer. Just her having completely shot nerves and no sleep. Okay, say I believe all this, I say. Raffi only talked to her. Why'd you shoot him? Grandpa just kind of pauses. Because, he sighed, he finally talked to me. According to my grandfather, who I must stress is a man with zero imagination and swore to the good Lord this happened, he goes down the stairs one night to get a midnight snack. He opens the fridge. Meow. It's Raffi, sitting on the table counter, tail just kind of swishing in the air. Startles my grandpa, but once he sees it's just the cat, he kind of shrugs. Then, Raffi smiles like a human smiling, but it's wrong. The way a human trying to be creepy on purpose smiles. Eyes go wide and black, lips stretch to his ears, and teeth just glinting in the refrigerator's light. As I'm watching Grandpa describe this, he's shuddering. It still bothers him a decade later. Back in the kitchen, Grandpa just freezes in fear, watching Raffi just do this. And then he talks in a low but polite voice. You should kill your wife, John. Take your gun in the living room and blow her brains out. And then your grandson. And then yourself. Grandpa freezes, then backsteps towards the living room where his double barreled shotgun is hanging on a rack. Oh, He's getting his gun all right, snatches it off the wall, grabs two rounds and marches back into the kitchen. Raffi is still sitting there with that creepy smile, loads the rounds in front of him. Raffi's smile just getting bigger. Raffi finds out he just messed with the wrong farmer. Grandpa loads the rounds, but instead of marching upstairs and doing the dirty deed like Raffi wanted. He points the barrel straight at Raffi's head. For a split second, Grandpa swears he sees Raffi's smug, creepy smirk turn to fear as he pulls the trigger. First shot blows half of Raffi's head apart. Most of it turns to red paste and splatters the back wall. Raffi wobbles in place, dazed. He blinks. Then embers of hate flare up in his remaining eye. He hisses and pounces at Grandpa, scratching and biting and making sounds no cat should make as Grandpa tries to fight him off. Cursing all the while, screaming at Raffi until he finally throws him to the floor and unloads the second round into him. Second shot blows out Raffi's insides and he falls limp against the floor. He looks up at Grandpa one last time and whispers something. I'll be back, John. And then Raffi goes still. Grandpa's considering getting more ammo to finish the job when both me and Grandma run down the stairs. He gives a little more info of what happened that night. I found out what he whispered to her.
He heard Rafi tell him to kill her, so he shot him. Grandma's eyes go wide, and that tells him everything he needed to hear. He'd been talking to her, too. So, I ask, where'd you bury him? Grandpa laughs. Bury? I burned that little shit's corpse. Sent him right back where he came from. Christ almighty, I breathe. Grandpa shoots me a look for taking the Lord's name in vain, but I guess considering what he just told me, he decides to let it go. So, did Rafi ever make good on that threat? Grandpa gets really quiet, just teeters back in his rocking chair for a good few minutes, like he's not sure if he should answer. His voice goes real dark. He's not always a cat. <laughs>